Welcome to the video today. We're going to look at how you can quickly take one scalar chord progression and turn it into a song. And to do that, we're going to start with the arranger track. We're going to have, of course, the chord track, scalar track. Then we're going to have some instruments. Today, I'm just going to use a piano and the orchestra complete too for the rest of the instruments. And so we're going to take a look at how to do this quickly, and then from there you can make a more elaborate and complex song. So first of all, let's create our arranger track. And the way I did that was just to uh, create a new track by saying add track and arranger, and that will create this arranger track. And how to create new uh, segments for your arranger track is simply switch to your draw tool and then draw in over however many measures you like that will create a new part then switch to your selection tool again go up to the name part here and you can name it anything you like and that will show up back here and then you have your new part and i just did that for the intro verse choruses and bridges here so that's how you do your arranger track so now for the scalar and the chord track, very simple, just open up scalar and uh, turn off the internal sound. Won't be using that today. And, uh, but you can go to any of the chord progressions built in. And uh, there are many to choose from, but to keep things simple, we just went to common progressions and we picked ballad. And because we want the most notes for every chord um, to give us all the MIDI informa information we're going to need for this little demonstration, we picked the thickest, widest, richest chords, which would be colored three. We drag them down to the bottom here because that gives us the most options for playback abilities and editing up here. So simply take, lasso these tra uh, chords and drag them to the piano track and their full long notes if we look here they're they go for an entire measure each note because we have it set up to four long beats over here so you may want to change that from two beats standard to four beats and that gives us longer notes for our chords which is allows us to make a full chord per measure and so now that we grabbed this chord progression, we can move Scalar to the side. And we can say that, well, we have the information we need now to create a chord track. So select that track, move up to Project and Cubase, go to Chord Track, create chord symbols from that track. And we're fine here, just click OK. And magically, all these chords from here are made into the chord track up here, which, because we use the chord track color system, we find now that all these notes for the chords are in the right colors, green or blue, meaning they're in scale, in tune for our song. And if we go back to Scalar, when we created this chord progression, it also tells us that we're in an A minor scale, which will come in handy too for creating more elaborate uh, parts of this song. So in essence, we have all the components to create a song now. All right, so now let's set up the different sections of our song with what we have so far. So let's quickly lasso the names of our chords up here and uh, copy those and move the cursor over to the chorus A and paste those and move the cursor to verse B and paste those same notes there. So now we know the names of all our chords through the different sections of our song except for the bridge where we're going to change the chords there later. And now we're going to say that for the beginning of our song um, these lush full chords are too much. We're going to save that for maybe verse B or the chorus A um, so let's just quickly move that over to verse B where the song gets most complex and heavy. Either the chorus or the verse, it's up to you. This is just a simple demonstration. But we need simpler versions of these chords 
for the verse A now and chorus A. So for the verse and the chorus of the beginning of the song, simple and then later more complex. So let's take a look at how to do that now. So for the most simple version for uh, verse A, we could go with a triad and um, uh, Scalar gives us that information uh, right with the, the common progression. So ballad, there is the colored versions, the full thick versions down here, or just the triad. So we select that and we have those up here and we can drag that into our piano track. And that gives us exactly what we're looking for. Three notes for every chord, a triad. And that will be appropriate for the beginning of our song. So now for chorus A, middle part of our song, it would be nice if we had those triads here, but add with an added bass note. And you can do that very simply by just selecting the names of our chords up here and dragging it down to our piano track here, and that will give us the triad plus a bass note. And so let's just do that. We drag it down, and if we select them all and um, paste them together with the paste tool, go back to selection, we can see that's exactly what we have down here. So now we have the triads up here. So one, two, three notes for every chord. And then down here are the bass notes for those chords. So now we have simple triads up here for that section. We have triads plus a bass note. And then we have full lush uh, thick chords up here for the finale part of our song. All right, so now for the bridge, what can we do? Uh, we need something that's interesting, maybe more rhythmic, faster paced but still based on our original chords. So uh, there are a couple things we can do. Um, we can go back to Scalar and uh, we can say to Scalar, okay, uh, we want those original chords, but let's go back to the two beat version, which I've set up here. So it was on four beats and I've set it now to two beats. And uh, let's drag out those same chords, but now the two beat version. So we drag that into our piano track. And that's exactly what we get. We get the same chords, but just faster, twice as fast. And then if we select that, go to project again, and chord track, uh, create the chord symbols, and hit that, and say yes, same thing. So now we have the exact same thing as we have here, just that it will play back twice as fast. So we can move Scalar away now, and um, we can play that back with our piano, and it should be twice as fast. And that's what we get. So now we can make some more variations so that our bridge is a little bit more interesting, not only rhythmically, but we're going to invert some of these chord notes. So let's zoom in a little bit. And we can start the process by selecting uh, middle notes of every chord. And we can say, oh, it'd be great to keep the theme of these chords, but just uh, make it slightly different than the others. We can hold down the Alt key and drag out the middle notes and invert it higher. So now let's play that. That's a little more interesting. Um, we could also uh, make it a lot more rhythmic. We could say, well, let's change the grid to quarter notes. And we could select all of these notes. And we can dice them up into quarter notes. So now we even have more rhythm. And maybe that's where we'll just go with it for now. There's so many different ways we could change that up. But uh, for now, let's just use that for our uh, beginning of our bridge. So what I want to do now is um, glue all these parts together, make a copy, and play it with a sustained uh, instrument, which will, uh, that's what we're going to use to play our chords. So let's do that now. Let's select everything. And um, let's just glue it all together. So now it's one continuous uh, set of notes. 
and uh, we can hold down the Alt key, drag it down to our next track, and um, we can say that we'll turn off the piano. And now let's listen to it with a sustained strings uh, from the orchestra complete. And that will let us hear what we have so far with the sustained sound for our chords. So now we have some variation, all starting from the basic chords that we picked. And that was just from one chord progression. Um, we could modulate into different um, notes, different keys. But just to keep things very simple, to show you how you can get the most out of one chord progression really quickly, we do have a different version of the same chords for every section of our song which could then be, you know, easily manipulated into a whole lot of other versions. But it does, it does give us some nice variation for every section and sets us up for um, making our melody notes, our staccato rhythm notes, our bass notes, and everything we need for a song for our other instruments. So now we're going to look at um, creating the next instrument. So we're going to need to take these notes transform them into the appropriate MIDI for our next instrument. All right, so now for our next track, we have our sustain set up nice. And uh, one thing I would like to do though, first on the sustain is go back to that track and just cut out the rhythmic bridge part, which isn't appropriate for the sustain articulation. So we're gonna use different instruments on that particular section. So I'll delete that for now. So let's move to the second track, which is going to be our legato lead track. And the instrument we're going to use for that is simply the orchestra complete has folders. And in that folder, you can find legato instruments, strings. And I stacked the uh, legato strings one or uh, violins one, two, the viola and the cello all in one contact instrument. So it's a legato instrument now, string instrument, which needs overlapped MIDI notes to play properly. So let's do that and start to edit the MIDI. So for this track, we know we copied over the exact same MIDI. So we're simply going to have to edit this MIDI down to give us a kind of uh, nicely moving legato lead instrument and uh, let's do that. So what we need to do is get rid of all the notes first that we don't need for this particular instrument. And again, the bridge, bridge section here, which is faster and rhythmic, it's not appropriate for a smooth legato uh, instrument line. So let's get rid of that. We don't need those notes in this particular track. Um, we don't need any of the bass notes, so let's get rid of the bassy notes from the first triads. We don't need those. Get rid of that. And, of course, all the bass notes from that. We get rid of that. And uh, what we really only need is two notes that uh, from every part here to kind of rhythmically or slowly... Uh, transition from one note to the next in a legato way. So let's just demonstrate that. First, I'm going to get rid of these notes too. And so we just have two notes for this version also. And for the very lush notes, we can get rid of the top notes, which are too high for our legato. And we can get rid of that note. And we can get rid of the bassy notes. So just chop off some of these notes. We can get rid of that note. And I would say we want these. I would say that's the only notes we need. So let's get rid of that. So now we have only two notes 
in a nice range in every section of our song and that's what we want to begin our legato um, version here. So for a very nice legato track we need notes that overlap nicely in time and have a little variation with the velocity to have a nice flow for our legato instrument. So a way to do that with these notes that we've edited is to say that, okay, we're going to start on a certain note, and let's say E in this case. So this note will be our starting note. The C underneath will simply drag that over, and the transition will start with the E, and so this is where our transition, our legato transition will be. And we can do that for the second measure also, but we don't want it to go from one note to the same note. So we know that this C3 needs to be dragged over, and that will be the transitioning note, and the A2 will be the lead note. So that's what we'll do for our, our second measure. And same thing as we go down the line. So we'll have G2 as our main note, and so transition note will be the E. And you don't have to have it in the same position in each measure. Depending on your legato, if it's a fast or slow legato, um, you know, you may be able to do a transition really quick if you have a very fast legato. But in this case, our orchestra legato is fairly slow. The transition is needs a little bit of time to establish the note. Uh, the attack time is slow, I should say. So we do need our lead note to be at least maybe at least that long, if not longer. So let's just stay with something that's safe. And then for our next, we'll see that it's going to go up to the B2, so we can drag that over. So that should work fairly good for the beginning of our legato. And let's just listen to it at this point. And um, I'm not liking this transition here, so we're going to change that. And um, the idea is that the key is that you're using notes that originate from the chord notes, right? And so you don't want to just deviate and then move this down to some arbitrary note somewhere. Um, you want to stay with the notes that you've started with or in the same, you can change the register by just using octaves. So this E transition is a bit low for our legato strings. So I'm going to select this note and just with the shift key and arrow key up, I'm going to trans... Uh, are going to put that up into a newer register, this note, but in the same octave, or one octave up, I should say. So, but it's still one of the key notes of our chord, just one octave up. So it should uh, sound okay. Now, you also want to remember that this note here needs to legato over, transition over to the next measure. So now let's take these notes and transition them over also into the next measure so that we have a continuous legato transitions and even into the next measure, right? So now let's listen to that. And this note's a bit long, so we're going to drag that and maybe drag it out like that just to make I think that will be a little bit better. So also there are a few other things we can do here. Um, since the legato transition takes a little bit of time to build up, uh, legato's attacks are usually slower than say a staccato note. Um, sometimes it can really improve things to uh, not on the first note but on all the other notes for a certain section here we may want to uh, move those a little bit up. So you may want to change your division on your grid up and just have it move up a little bit so that the transition, uh, it gives the attack time a little bit of time to build up 
and you might find that sounds better depending on what instrument and what legato articulation you're using. Let's try that now. Just to get the change of note right on the beat, since the attack is so slow, it sometimes it helps to just move that over a little bit. But it's totally dependent on what instrument you're using, what legato. So another thing what we can do to make this a little more interesting, a little bit more flowing, is to um, say that we want our velocity, as they're playing the bow, the, the instruments, they're not always an exact same velocity, and that's very important. And, and I really always talk about velocity in my videos because it is very important. So the, the first note's going to be stronger, or it could be lighter, depending how you want to start the passage. But the idea is to have some variation. So the second one maybe is starts to build up a little bit, and the third note's starting to get stronger, a more bold note and then lighter, and then, and then back down, and then maybe a little bit up again, and then ending that passage or section of the song and maybe a light note. So that's how you can uh, vary it up a little bit. So now let's play that. In fact, the higher notes are usually a stronger note. So let's just do the opposite there. And build that up like that and play it back. So for now, that's good enough. It's given me a nice flow for a legato instrument. One other thing to mention is you may be wondering why these notes turned blue. It's because when I dragged this note over, and when I drag it back, it'll turn green again. See that? It's just that because we're on the C, this, um, our chord track, all it sees is this measure. And it says everything in this measure should be C. And when I drag over this note to give the, the attack of the legato a little bit more time to settle in, it just turns the note to a blue saying that it's no longer perfectly in key, but it's still within the scale. And it's just at this point, it's just a visual thing, right? So and just in case you're wondering why they, those turn blue when you do drag over some of these notes into, the, into a new measure, that measure's not correctly. It, it's set up to be a C measure, and you're dragging the note back into like an F, so it's... But that's why that's occurring, just in case you wondered. So now we have the sustains and the legato lead. Let's listen to what we have so far. So it's starting to build up with just two tracks and we have some nice variation with the different chords as they get more lush towards into verse B. But now we're going to move on to the melody where we're going to actually bring in some melody notes and uh, which will give us an interesting uh, theme to our music. All right, so now let's talk about creating the melody. We have a piano for the melody track here. And uh, we've got it set up on the chorus A section. And uh, let's start again from those original chord notes. How do we create a melody? Well, let's zoom in a little bit here and scroll this up. And we see our original chord notes here with their bass notes. So we can get rid of the bass notes. We don't need those. So let's delete that. And um, let's say, how can we get some more notes from these original chord notes? We can grab the first or the middle notes of every chord. And we can uh, copy these up one octave. So let's just go to G. There we are. One octave up, which gives us a few more notes within the chords to cut some melody from.
All right, so now let's start to cut the melody out of these original chord notes. We're on a quarter grid. Let's switch to the slicing tool and let's just start cutting some possible melody notes into here and our ears will tell us where to go, but let's just make some initial cuts just to get things moving here. And uh, so let's start at the bottom here and then do the same thing, but move up on this measure. For this measure here, let's simply uh, grab all the notes and split it in half for now. Boom. And then the last measure will be a repeat of this initial motif of the first measure once we get this worked out. So now let's just listen to where we're at currently and play it. All right, so we got things moving here. But there's a lot of cleanup we need to do to make things a little more interesting. And since we're going to be playing the chords above it, we don't need to replay the chord notes, the full chord notes, because that will be coming from our sustain chord notes above this and this track here. So let's, um, we could get rid of those right now, but let's see. We want to keep, we want to have a uh, melodic first note so we might keep that one up there and get rid of the three beneath it so let's just start with this and play it again and I'm not too keen on the repeating notes because when you have repeating notes that's more of like a rhythmic idea and we're going to keep our rhythmic uh, measure idea for this third measure here so we do have this repeating note up here, but we do have our chord color scheme on and we know that we could change this an octave up or down, or we could simply just move it into a pitch that is in line with our uh, scale and key. So we're going to do that and now we're going to play it. And that seems to be fine for a beginning idea. So let's take this uh, pitched idea and transfer it to this chord shape here. So we can simply say, well, let's just go back to our cut tool and we can say, okay, our first cut is there uh, on our first uh, note, our high note. The second the highest note is cut in the middle. And then the last one is just two of these low notes are cut there. So let's get rid of this. We can um, actually we have to move this down now the same as we did. So it'll be the first in pitch and key green there. We can get rid of the rest of these notes. So now we have the same uh, motif idea here, but we have it in this chord shape there. So now let's play what we have. All right, so that just gives us some ideas to start with. So now let's do a little cleanup. We can say that Again, we don't need these beginning first notes because the chord notes on the other track will handle that. We don't need, we don't want to have notes that aren't necessary, just duplicates, because it just adds to um, a bunch of excessive um, potential uh, musical information that isn't needed, which, you know, once you start stacking track after track after track, you just get a buildup of things you don't necessarily need. And you don't want repetitive notes playing. So, um, but we do need it for this um, kind of staccato rhythmic idea. And to keep that rhythmic idea going, we may say that, uh, well, let's cut this into quarter notes and see how that um, acts for us. Now let's check it with our ears now again. Now that's just way too repetitive. So let's reverse that, get out of that. And we do, do need a beginning note here. So 
What I think I'm going to do is cut that over here and move that over. And we may even get rid of that. And we may take that note and move it over here. With the piano, uh, it's not going to sustain that long anyway, so let's keep some notes sustaining slightly. Now let's listen to that. Alright, so that's an interesting uh, place we're going, and why not do the same thing there? Um, it's an interesting uh, place to start. Now let's switch the grid to eighth notes, where we can add in a little bit of extra uh, musicality, so to speak. So let's say that um, these two notes here, which are basically acting chordal here, and we don't want that for a melody. But what we're going to do is we're going to bump that over like that to give us a little two-step out of this measure. And uh, we might do the same thing here. And uh, just to keep the motif somewhat similar, but you notice that we're going to use the bottom note here, and we used the top note of these two here. Just starting to add some variation, but keeping the themes very similar. And all within the notes of the chord and the scale, which keeps everything in overall harmony, right? So now let's just see what these little extra eighth notes are adding for us. I like that because it gives us a little two-step out of the chord or out of the measure into the next measure. Now, for this, we needed a little bit more rhythmic without it sounding robotic. So. I think because we're going to have tracks that handle our uh, rhythms a lot better, um, we do want to keep this uh, very melodic. So I think what I'm going to do with this track here is, or this measure here is, I'm going to get rid of these notes here. And um, I think we're going to cut it up so that we will have quarter notes so we're just going to have quarter note rhythms, but it's going to go through the different notes of our um, triad here. So let's just see how that sounds. A little bit too robotic there, so let's take that down like that. And maybe take this down like that. So we do want it rhythmic, but it still it has to be pitched rhythm. Um, we don't just want that you know staccato like uh, rhythmic feel. So we want to use melody for melody's sake, and uh, so that's what we're trying to do here. We want to make this measure different than the other measures, uh, more rhythmic but still melodic, if that makes any sense. So let's go back to the beginning and see what those changes give us. And I think here is a good uh, spot to cut this into an eighth note. So let's do an eighth note cut here and let's step it into, instead of it transitioning to the same note on that measure, which isn't uh, something that I like, let's drop that down or up. I think we could maybe go up. Try an up note, transition note there. This is a bit robotic here too. Um, I'm thinking to change that note. But actually, in this case, maybe just delete it. Let's try that. And my ears are liking that for now as a very simple little melodic idea for course uh, section A. 
Now, what we want to do is hear it um, in context of the other tracks. So now I turn on the sustain chord track and I turn on the legato lead track and let's listen to what we have now. There is one other thing we can add with this initial melody idea, and that is to add some uh, velocity variation. And uh, so let's do that now. So let's just add in initial to be quiet, then a little louder. So then we have it kind of building up a little bit for the first, and then it goes down a little bit, and then it starts to build again. Oops. And get louder and then maybe kind of tail off towards the end for that particular and maybe have that note like that so um, now let's play it again with a little bit of the velocity changes In fact, this note should be a stronger, not that strong, but stronger. In fact, though, not that stronger. And let's take that down. Let's take those notes down. And so just before, so we're, I think every initial note on the new measure should be a little bit louder keep our kind of tempo in a similar fashion so let's let's try that and I like that and we're just going to add this build up to be a little bit stronger of a build up and so that's good. Now next we are going to look at creating the rhythm track and uh, what goes into building that. All right, for our rhythm track, um, we're going to use the uh, orchestra and we've got it set up for a uh, strings full staccato. So the articulation is a very short, fast attack. So that's what it sounds like. So that's the instrument we're using. Now the notes, how are we going to handle these original chord notes and make them staccato notes and rhythmic? It's actually quite easy. So, but I have three or four different ideas for the different sections. So for the first section of the song, it's possible to just leave um, very little rhythmic information and just cut these in half notes or maybe even just leave them as full notes. So. You know, you're just getting one rhythmic pulse every measure as the idea of the song starts to build. So I think for a very simple idea, we're going to keep these as full measures right now um, or half notes. But for the bridge, uh, which may be moved over, um, I think for it to build up properly, the bridge should be between chorus A and verse B. So we may just move that over later, but that will be so easy to do because you can simply grab all that bridge information and just drag it over into whatever section of the song you want later. So that's not here or there at this point. It's totally an option for the future. But the bridge should be something very rhythmic, I'm thinking, because I want it to be fast and, you know, something interesting. So let's start doing that and let's just go back to our staccatos here and um, I'm thinking okay we need it more than just let's start off with half measure pulses just to start some kind of rhythmic feel. Then for the bridge we already have that cut into uh, if we zoom in a little bit and we set our looper on it and zoom in, we're, all, we're already at um, at least quarter notes here. So 
let's turn this into eighth notes. We can do that quickly. Just select everything and we can just, of course, we need an eighth grid. grid. And then we can just go like that and that. Just cut these full chords into eighth notes and play that. But that's not enough. We need to vary the velocity a little bit, add a little bit of spice. So we want it to pulse. So we want every second one of these quarter notes to be pulsing stronger. Let's listen. And that adds some flavor there. And for some added interest, um, I like to just take the odd note and keep it within the key, but uh, just to add a little bit so that your ear doesn't get bored and you never know what to expect within the rhythm itself. There's going to be slight variation, but not much, just enough so that your ear is always ready for something new and never quite knowing what or where, but let's maybe just add that as some variation. Now let's try it again. And these are very slight variations, but you can enhance that by saying this note up here, grab that note and put that on full velocity. And we can grab that note and also make it full velocity. So the slight changes that we do make are emphasized. Now let's listen. Now to my ears that's way better than just a straight eighth pulse notes uh, with the velocity changes and just the odd note changed but highlighted. That adds enough variation that you're getting your rhythm, but you're getting a more interesting rhythm. Next, we're going to look at the course A rhythm and see how what we can do there. All right, for the course A section, we are going to come up with a different rhythmic idea. And uh, let's take our bass notes and delete those. Let's select all the remaining chord notes and chop them into quarters. So they're all being chopped into quarter notes. And then we're going to enhance these quarter notes, give it some kind of interest. All right, next thing we can do at this stage is add some rhythmic feel. I think we'll start with a louder uh, velocity, then add velocities as we go. So again, we're staggering the velocities just for effect. And that's good for now. Now, if we listen to it, you know, it's the basis for a more interesting pattern. So let's take every second uh, note from up top and alternate. And for the next one, let's alternate low. Let's just see how that sounds for an idea. In fact, this will be even higher and this will be even lower if we can stay in register of the instrument. And we can drag our velocity information down so we can see the notes and listen to this now. And now we want to emphasize that note, just that one note, maybe not that much, and we want to emphasize that note, just those notes. See how that goes. That's working for a simple rhythmic pattern. And we're going to do the same thing on the next uh, measure. You don't want things too complex because every track adds its own layer of uh, complexivity, so to speak. So if you have too much on every track, the overall song may be just too much. So each track needs to have interest in its own way. 
And um, so that one, now we're going to take this lower. That goes lower, and that goes all the way down there. And that note is emphasized, and this note gets emphasized. Okay, let's play that. I think that's good for this section of song. And uh, just for the sake of variation, now let's see what I did for the verse B section, which is very similar, but just different. So it's the same idea of rhythm, but uh, if I can have this set up right here, okay, um, but just different. So for a different section of the song. So you want every section of your song to be slightly different, but overall have the same theme of your song. So let's play this. So we have, in essence, two different versions, if we select both of them, of a rhythmic pattern in quarter notes with just varying patterns, right? So next we're going to look at just the bass track and then the overall song. All right, time for the bass track. Uh, should be fairly simple. Um, our first section, uh, verse A, doesn't have bass notes, so we can get rid of that completely. We can take the uh, chorus section, which we know has bass notes, and we can copy that over. And once we do that, we can just get rid of the higher uh, chord notes. And now we have bass notes. And we can just play that for a starting point here. And we're playing that with just a staccato bass sound. Later we're going to add a sustain, but for now we have just the orchestra complete uh, low staccato preset. And that gives us the initial bass. And then bass for the uh, uh, section, the bridge, bridge section, we can zoom into that a little bit, and uh, let's just take a look at what we got for that. So here we know that we have four notes, so we can get rid of the first three notes in every part of this and just leave a bass note. So I could have done that faster. But we could leave these as quarter notes, or we could make these uh, staccato bass notes, eighth notes, totally up to you at this point. But we're going to leave it um, as quarter notes right now. But I have a feeling we may change this to stepped uh, eighth notes. Um, we could start to add some variation in the velocity, just to have some emphasis on every second one. And in fact, my intuition is, is that we are going to cut these into some of these into eighth notes and have them step around a little bit to make the bass walk a little bit. So I think we're going to try something like this to start with and just have our bass walking around a little bit. And let's just... Might take this note and just make it a little bit distinguished by giving it a different velocity, or we may change that. But for now, our base for the bridge is a good starting point. We have some rhythm. But if you notice, the rhythm isn't straight eighths. There are some longer sustained notes for variation in there, some quarter notes and some eighth notes, basically. All right, now our bass in the chorus section. How are we going to treat that? Uh, we could go with quarter notes and again, get rid of the top notes. And I think to start with, we're going to just go with uh, we're going to go with quarter notes, and that'll be where we'll start for there. And then the more kind of interesting uh, 
uh, verse B section with all the interesting lush chord notes up top for sustains, what do we do for our bass? Well, we'll have some bass variation. So we'll just get rid of the top um, notes we don't need. And let's keep two of the bass notes in every measure. And that's what we're going to do for some variation. So let's start to cut these up. And uh, I think I think what we'll do is we'll cut them all into quarters first. Just an idea of where I'm going here. And I think what's going to make this more interesting than the other bass notes is the fact that we have some different bass notes to start with, but we can alternate. Um, we can delete one and uh, we can do some alternation like that. So let's see if we can get that on to the right. I can get my coordination here. All right, so now so that's too heavy there, but if we just alternate, get rid of that again, something like that, and then it steps up to here, get rid of that, 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 and then it's going to step up and get rid of that that and that and that so and again we want to add with this alternating definitely want to add the variation of velocity So, let's... All right, so now we have a walking alternating bass for our final section. So, if we zoom out, we start to see the song as a whole again. So, in the final section, I'm going to play all these tracks together and uh, see if we've come up with something that is in any way musical. So now let's zoom out and listen to some of these ideas as a whole and see where we've uh, gotten to here. So you can hear the changes in the different sections and I think if I was creating a song I would have some more variation from uh, the chorus or verse A to chorus A and uh, you may even want to change some of those chords and then that would get into a video about um, really uh, song structure and that but in this video I wanted to show you that you could take one any chord progression and you have enough information with just those notes to create a sustain uh, chords of course you have a lead legato you can create a staccato rhythm can be created and a nice bass line so uh, with that we'll play it again and then we're going to play the alternate version of uh, verse b here as another idea of uh, how you could take this so First B idea. That just has a difference in melody and some variations in uh, the other tracks. 
The only other track that stays the same for verse B would be the lead legato. Uh, the rest of the tracks are have variations. So endless variety of what you can do for your different sections, all from one uh, chord progression. Hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you had a chance to make music wherever you're at in the world today and we'll see you on the next one.